Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different, so it's still relating to my job in publishing, but it's about commuting into London from Kent, which is where I live. So I live in Kent still with my parents, and in Kent I live in like the Dartford, Crayford area. So in this video I'm going to be talking about my journey, the expense of it, living in London versus Kent, and a short snippet from my work colleague Faye, who lives in Canterbury and was commuting from there to London. This video is actually requested and a couple of people have emailed me asking about what it was like commuting to the office, so I thought, this is what you guys want, I'll give it to you. So, altogether, I spent about three hours every day commuting to the office. And why it was three hours is because I live in between Dartford and Crayford. So I live probably like an equal distance between Dartford Station and Crayford Station. But Crayford Station is zone six and Dartford Station is zone eight. And what that means is Crayford is closer to London, therefore it's the smaller number. And Dartford is further away, meaning it's more expensive. So naturally, obviously, I used to go from Crayford Station because it was the same amount of distance from my house and it was cheaper. So from my house to Crayford Station, it's about a 20 minute walk. And that was really nice to be honest, to have that time in the mornings. I mean, obviously sometimes I was stressed that I was gonna be late and I had to kind of speed walk there or drive to the end of the road and then walk the rest of it. But all, all in all, it was about a 20 minute walk to Crayford Station. And then I think I used to get like the 7.56 train or something. So it wasn't that early. Like some people obviously get the train at six, half past six. So yeah, I'm quite lucky in that sense that my train was basically about eight o'clock. And then I used to go from Crayford to Charing Cross and that would take, it would take 45 minutes. Obviously sometimes there's delays and sometimes it's a lot quicker, uh, but give or take about 45 minutes. So then I arrived at Charing Cross and it was about a 15 minute walk to my office in Bedford Square in Bloomsbury. That was always really nice to be honest because it's London and you're in London and there was so much to see all the time. So although I was taking the exact same route every day, it was quite nice to see that buzz. So yeah, so all in all with like the 20 minute walk either side and then the 45 minute train journey, it was usually give or take about an hour and a half to get from my house to the office and then obviously had to do that going home again at the end of the work day. A lot of the time it was a bit more than that as well at the end of the day because um, I'd have to wait for the next train. So yeah, I was getting home, if I finished work at half five, I was getting home maybe half seven most nights, which is which is okay, it's not that late, but obviously then you've got to do dinner, have dinner, get yourself ready, have a bit of an evening, etc. So now working from home, it's been such a difference having my evenings and just having so much time. So this is before, but I'm definitely really lucky because I still live with my parents and I have that set office area. I'm not one of those people that are stuck in a one bedroom flat and I'm really grateful for that. It's just been such a difference to one meter to the lounge rather than have to wait two hours for I'm home again. And sometimes it was so annoying as well. If I was like really tired, or if I'd been wearing makeup and I just wanted to slouch and whatever and I knew that I'd have to do this walk and then get the train and then walk again. And the times I was in the office as well, when I first started my job, it was all kind of wintry months. So I joined in October and then obviously it was March that we went into lockdown. So they were all kind of the colder months. So I definitely think it would be different if I was doing it now or if I was doing it in the summertime where obviously it's a lot warmer, but then I do kind of think, well, the trains were so busy anyway that everyone would be really hot and stuffy on the train, so pros and cons. So that was my journey, that's what I used to do. I never used to change it. Um, my sister lives in central London, so the only time I would really go a different route is if I was staying at hers that night. One thing to note as well is because I just got a southeastern train from Crayford to London Charing Cross and vice versa, I never got the tube, so I could get the tube if I went from Charing Cross to Tottenham Court Road. I don't even know if that's a direct tube, I can't actually remember. But that saved me a lot of money because it was only really like a 15, 20 minute walk from the office to, from the station to my office. And that just saved me a lot of money. By the time I'd gone to ground, got on the next tube, etc., I walked from the Tottenham Court Road station to my office. It, it's basically taken just as long anyway. Um, so to save myself the money and the hassle and the claustrophobia, etc., I walked from London Charing Cross to my office. All in all, the walks, especially from my office and to Charing Cross Station, vice versa, I did really enjoy that. So the train was about 45 minutes, which to some people is quite quick and then some people it's quite long. So on the train, on the way there, which I cannot believe I used to do every single day now, but I used to wear makeup every single day to the office. And so on the train to work in the mornings, I would sit on the train and do my makeup. And a lot of people used to be like, how do you do that? How do you do your makeup? I generally didn't have a problem with it. I don't know if I'm just really skilled or maybe my makeup did just look awful every single day and no one told me, but I didn't have a problem with it. I just had a little mirror, had my little makeup bag. Oh, my dog is here. 
Oh, hello. Yeah, so I used to just keep my little makeup bag in my bag ready to take to work and then I'd have everything in there. So mascara, eyeshadow, foundation, everything. And I used to do the full works, like a full face of makeup every single day. And now that I think about it, when I wear my glasses and stuff, I must have just always had that mark there and foundation on the glasses. And, mm. and so my makeup would usually take about 40 minutes. So by the time I got to London Bridge, I'd kind of be finished with my makeup. And then if I had any spare time on the way to work and definitely on the way home from work, I would just be checking my phone for any notifications and reading. When we first went into lockdown in March last year, um, I found it really different because I was reading so much, because I was reading every single day on the train without a doubt for 45 minutes at least. And then to not have that time dedicated, I just wasn't reading enough because I didn't have that time. So although I did have time because I was at home, etc., it kind of gave me that time in that place. You know, I was sitting on a train, there was nothing else I could do. So I read then. So how much did it cost me? It was a lot, but I kind of knew that it was going to be that much. So I was using the South Eastern service. And as I said, I was going from Crayford Terminal to London Charing Cross every day. And that was the annual ticket that I paid for just to do that journey. So the ticket that I had, I couldn't get choosy with that or anything like that. So that was, £2,140, which to a lot of people probably is quite a lot, but as I said, I kind of always grew up knowing that that's what my family did. They lived in Kent and then they paid the money and they went to work in London. It's important to know as well that it does go up every year, whether that's £100 or £200, whatever it is. It also differs on what zone you're going to. So because I was going from Crayford, which was zone six, rather than Dartford, which was zone eight, it was a lot more to go from Dartford, so obviously I went to the cheaper version. It's also worth noting as well, I didn't get any tubes, and again, it's more expensive if you get tubes rather than just a South Eastern service to A to B, whatever. Different stations are more money as well, so if I was going to St Pancras or King's Cross or anything like that, it just, I, so I can't tell you like this is how much it will be if you're commuting from London because it genuinely does differ like there's no set rule it depends where you live it depends what station you're going to it depends if you need to get a tube and it depends like where your office is in relation to all that so I was quite lucky in the fact that my office in Bedford Square was quite central and so it was quite easy for me to get to and from but for some people they might have to get like three different tubes like the Piccadilly line the circle line etc one good thing about working at Bloomsbury though is they offered me like a travel loan ticket so they basically pay for the ticket up front and then they just take it um, a monthly monthly like instalment out of your wages each month so you don't really notice it come out of your bank because it just comes out of your wages before you get paid rather than like going into your bank account and being taken away if that makes sense so that's really important as well so if you are um, living in Kent or elsewhere and you're thinking that you're about traveling to London obviously when we are going back into the offices see if any companies do something like that and um, I know it's definitely becoming more popular and as I said Bloomsbury do it and obviously it can help you out a lot if you don't have that lump sum of money straight away so would I ever live in London I don't think I would if I was working in London then live in London just because in my experience, it hasn't actually been that bad living in Kent. As I said, I still live with my parents, and so I pay like a small housekeeping fee, but it would be nowhere near as much as I would pay for the rent in London. Um, my sister lives in central London, and I just wouldn't want to be paying that much money that she pays. Some people it does work, and I think a lot of the people that I worked with at Bloomsbury were in central London, and you know, you might, they might just get a tube and their commute might be 20 minutes door to door. So in some ways, yes, my commute was longer and it was expensive but then I don't have to pay the rent, so it's kind of balancing that up. And as I said, I can't tell you what's better living in London or living outside and commuting. It just depends on your situation, you know, if you're able to still live with family or anything like that. So Faye, who I work with at Bloomsbury, has agreed to tell me a bit more about her commute because I know she lived in Canterbury, and so that's even further away than I am in Dartford. So obviously things are changing and we've been working from home for about 10 months now, which is crazy to think about, like I've been working from home more than I was in the office. And that's obviously saved me such a chunk of money. That's basically saved me about two grand this year just from working from home. I personally don't think I'd want to go back to commuting five days a week into the office because it is expensive. And proving that we can work from home, I think a lot of employees are gonna recognize that and recognize that people are in different situations and it might be more 
ideal for those employees to work from home at least some of the time. So Bloomsbury have already been really good and said that we can work from home, I think it's like two to three days a week. So they've already said basically you can do 50% in the office and at home, which I'm definitely gonna consider taking the offer up on that. So I know this has been like a bit of a weird video at the moment because it's not directly talking about publishing, but it's about what, when I was commuting to my publishing job. Um, but if you do wanna see some other publishing related videos, please make sure to subscribe and tell me in the comments what you're finding useful, etc., or what you'd like to see more of. I genuinely appreciate every single one of my subscribers, so thank you so much. And I've just genuinely really enjoyed doing this. So now, as I said, Faye's gonna be telling you a bit about her commute. And um, as I said, we both worked at Bloomsbury. And so this is a boy it's been like from her point of view. So I would commute from Canterbury to London St Pancras every working day. Um, and then when I reached St Pancras, I would walk from there to Bedford Square, which is where the Bloomsbury London offices uh, are. Uh, the train journey itself was about 50 minutes in total. Luckily on this side, I live really close to the train station. It's like a five minute walk, if, if that. Um, but then on the other side, walking from St Pancras to Bedford Square, it was about 25 minutes altogether, um, which meant that in total, it was about an hour and 20 minutes from beginning to end, which I think other people did similar journeys. Even people that live in London uh, often sort of travel roughly an hour uh, to get to work. So I don't know, I feel bad complaining about it because it doesn't feel much worse than other people's experiences. At the time, it was just insane to me. I think maybe part of that was also from the fact that when I was working in Canterbury before I got into publishing, uh, my walk to work was 10 minutes. So I didn't need to spend a lot of time trying to figure out travel and how to get to work, it was just a 10 minute walk. Whereas as soon as I started working in publishing, I started then having to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. I felt like I was constantly sleep deprived. I was just getting up to go to work and my free time was when I was on the train um, and I often spent that time sleeping. I was pretty much a zombie throughout that. In regards to how much that all cost, um, it doesn't really get any better. <laughs> It cost about five and a half grand um, a year, which is an insane amount of money to spend on something at an assistant level. And just really unfortunate that that's how much trains cost. So I think that proportionally equaled out to around 450 pound a month. 450 pounds a month coming out was <sighs> ridiculously tough. In regards to this being like a sustainable means of living, absolutely not. Not at the time anyway. I've since been promoted, luckily, which means that I do have extra money coming in each month. And now I also, I mean, unfortunately, obviously COVID is a horrible thing that we've had to deal with. But luckily it means that I now don't spend £450 a month on the train. So I've definitely found a positive side to the horrific year we've all had. You know, other people are in my position. A lot of people that did travel in from other places like Sussex or Surrey lived with family or were in better positions or lived slightly close, which meant their train wasn't £450 a month and might have been more like £200 a month, which is more, it's easier to kind of swallow a bit. And yeah, I, I live with my partner in Canterbury. So it means that I am paying rent, I'm paying bills. And so all of that combined alongside £450 a month, I really didn't have much at the end of the month. I do feel incredibly lucky and know that, you know, there are people in much worse positions than I am. But it just felt like I am, it just felt like a lot of sacrifice. But Sacrifice that felt worth it for the experience as well. I, I, it was my dream to get into publishing. I worked so hard to try and get there that I didn't want to give up when I was faced with struggles uh, regarding money because I found myself with pretty much n next to nothing at the end of the month. Um, and it got to a point where I was kind of getting a bit further into my overdraft and I hadn't been in there since I was a student 
and I really didn't want to re-enter. Um, so I decided uh, for the best course of action, because I was also incredibly stressed about the amount of money that, was, that I was spending and the fact that, you know, I was having to get my calculator out to try and make sure that I was sticking to the strictest budget I possibly could. And yeah, I made the decision to do some part-time work and I was helping out at the restaurant that I worked at before I entered into publishing. I was working six days a week, working some evenings and didn't have much of a personal life, but I would take that over the stress of having to budget to tight, such a tight, tight budget. I would take, I would, it gave me a lot more sense of security and happiness, um, even if I didn't have any free time. When I did have free time prior to that, I was stressing about how much money I didn't have and the fact that I couldn't actually do anything or couldn't really see friends or really couldn't, you know, go to the pub for a drink. I have on occasion thought about relocating to London, not currently, um, but at the time when I was in the darkest depths of <laughs> my financial burden, um, I thought, you know, is, is this worth it? Is it worth staying in Canterbury? The truth is, I I don't, I know, I've never really wanted to leave Canterbury. Um, I've created a really great friendship group here that I absolutely adore. And also I live with my partner, which means I'm not the only person making this decision and or I'm not the only person affected at least. Uh, in making this decision and if we were to uproot and move to London it means he would have to give up his job that he's worked hard for and his friends and his family who live here and um, I couldn't bring myself to do that and I love Canterbury even if I was to move to London I don't know where I would go <laughs> I don't it's, I mean considering I went to London every single day or every single working day I don't know it very well. All I did, all I used to do was travel into work and then travel back and I kind of know the places around Bloomsbury offices and know that a little bit, but I, in terms of places to live, I could not tell you where I would move. <laughs> could anything change or does something need to change? At the time, 100% I felt like things needed to change. I would have loved to have had the option to work from home previously. It would have saved me a lot of money. It would have saved me a lot of stress. It was a very seldom occasion that people were allowed that. And I, I, hope, I, I understand why. But now that we've seen that it can work from home, things are changing and more flexibility is coming in for the future. And I'm sure more things will come into place. I definitely think publishing houses and just companies in general are reassessing uh, the way that work is are needed and the way that people and employees are given these set hours to work and how that can be changed and how we can allow flexibility within the working place. So. I think things are changing, but I think more I think more changes are being made and I think things are coming that we might not be expecting. So so as I was planning this video, I was going through, because I used to use Snapchat a lot back in the day, last year, and to tell like my boyfriend and my friends if there was any delays, etc. So I've gone through and found some of those photos and I'm gonna share them and I'm gonna put them on the screen maybe. Here if that works. So as I got off at Charing Cross, this used to be my view and I used to see um the National Gallery and as you can see like this if when it was so fresh in the mornings it would just be blue skies clear etc so that was always so nice oh so then this is where so this is an exception where I was getting the tube where I was I think I was going to my sister's at the time and the tube is just so unreliable I think they'd closed the whole station of I think this was Ox Oxford Circus this was insane there were literally hundreds of people trying to just get underground let alone on the actual tube yeah this is me taking a photo of a stranger sleeping yeah, so I always used to get the two seats. I never hate, I hate sitting in a six, hate sitting in a four, love to sit on the two. So this was me and some random guy, shout out. So this is obviously when my train had been delayed in the morning as well. So I was like, I start work in five minutes. I'm only just got off the train. So I'm still 20 minutes away to walk to the office and I'm already late basically. So I was like, oh, I love GFL. This was on Christmas Eve last year. So a lot of people obviously book off Christmas Eve for work. And I went in last year and that was what the train looks like. So it was, 
beautiful compared to normally if I was squished next to a stranger or having to stand up. I think that was just another time in um, London Charing Cross that it was just extremely busy and people just fighting and then as soon as you find out what platform your train's gonna be on everyone legs it. Uh, I think that's it, yeah, so I didn't really have many because why would you take a photo of you on the train? Not that I'm judging anyone for doing that because I probably have done that at one point. But yeah, I hope that was of some interest to you or you found it useful or you're considering moving to London, etc. Let me know your thoughts on if people and businesses are going to consider working from home more often. Um, I know that I'm definitely going to be doing it for the foreseeable future at the moment because who knows what's going to happen. Hope you enjoyed and hopefully see you in my next one. Bye!